Hello everybody and welcome back to Arthanix Plays Europa Universalis 4 as Byzantium. So once again, it's uh, been a week since I actually last played this game. So uh, it's going to take me a little bit to kind of get back into the swing of things. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the last week's worth of episodes and I'm looking forward to continuing this game and seeing uh, how much of the Byzantium Empire we can reconquer. Uh, when we left off, of course, we had just finished off a war with the Ottomans and um, a, a very costly and bloody war that has actually left us in a very precarious position. I know you're thinking, well, didn't you just win that war and acquire a bunch of new territories? And the answer to that is, of course, yes. However, our manpower reserves are totally shot. Our army consists largely of mercenaries, um, which we are losing money trying to pay for. Um, the new territory, much of it is not our religion and is going to result in a lot of unrest. And um, <laughs> on top of that, we're still at war. Even though we peaced out with the Ottomans, we're still in this French-Austrian struggle over Atois. So we've got a lot of problems. If we were to be attacked by a major power right now, we would be in serious trouble. Uh, fortunately, our only real enemy, potential enemy, that is of any significance that we're not already fighting in this other war. So, um, we're already fighting Tuscany. Um, they're already involved in this war, and in fact, they're sieging Rome. Our only major enemy of any significance is uh, Aragon, and they're actually friendly towards us. So, they're not likely to attack us, um, even though I think they have claims on some of our territory in Naples. Yeah. Um, I kind of forgot that these that Naples actually has cores on these provinces. If we get a chance, we might try and get them for Naples. But um, but probably not because we're going to be spending the next several years basically recovering from that immense costly war. So we got a few things to do. Um, before we unpause. First of all, uh, I'm going to consolidate this army, cut down on my maintenance costs, um, and hopefully start allowing my manpower reserves to recover. We're going to be down to using mercs for a while while our manpower reserves recover because we want to get out of the peasant revolt range as soon as possible. Um, fortunately, our legitimacy is almost all the way back. So, um, consolidate. Um, that will hopefully save us some money. Um, yeah, that saved us just consolidating. That saved us about two ducats a month, which is good. Um, so that was the first order of business. <clears throat> now, the good news is that the Ottomans are not having very happy times either. As you can see, all of these provinces are either under siege or have the recent uprising modifier which indicates that they just dealt with a massive Syrian revolt down here. Um, I know there's at least two armies and hopefully more wandering around down here besieging their provinces. So um, hopefully that'll keep them busy. Now they still have a fairly large army um, because we weren't really able to completely destroy their army in the war so they can probably deal with it but it will at least hopefully keep them occupied for a while um, all right so we're gonna so since Liege is actually the leader of this war I think we can peace out with France maybe without actually um, incurring any enmity from Austria so but unfortunately France is not interested in peacing out so we're actually gonna have to fight this war at least a little bit um, so what we're going to do is we're going to send our, um, transport and galley fleet. Let's see, we're going to send them here. Make sure there's no hostile navies on the way. It doesn't look like it. I think, um, between me and Venice and Naples, my vassals, we pretty much have naval control of the Eastern Med unless we get in a war with Aragon. They're the only other significant naval power in the Eastern Med that's left. I guess Austria has some naval powers too, but 
There's a bunch of other small ones, but no other significant ones. Um, because I'm really curious about how this is going to go, I'm going to um, send a couple of my shit. I know I'm it, it's it's I'm losing money to morbid curiosity here, but I'm going to send a couple of my light ships um, to keep an eye on Syria, the Syrian. Oops, I didn't want to send that fleet. I want to send that fleet. Keep an eye on these Syrian provinces to see how they do. I'll, I'll put them back into trading when they finish. Um, send the rest of my troops there. I'd love to support those Syrian rebels, but I really can't justify the expense right now. Um, okay, and then we're currently improving relations with Serbia. And... Um, we're annexing Naples. What we really need to do, I realized, is improve our relations with Venice. They actually have a negative opinion of me, and I don't want them to um, start getting any ideas about becoming independent. So I really need to improve my relations with them. Um, so I'll send my last diplomat there, and I can always recall my diplomat from Serbia if I need one. Um, okay, so looking at the missions, we have Protect Against Ottomans, so they have an army of 33, and we're not going to come close to that for a long time. We're not going to try and build up relations with the Timurids. Um, we could do this, claim Tin, although it's kind of a, that's not really a province I'm interested in going after. I'm much more interested in Crimea, um... Azov, but you know, there's no reason really not to do it. Um, it's five prestige and 25 military power. Sure, we'll take that mission. And when we get a spare diplomat, maybe we'll recall our diplomat from Serbia and have him start working on fabricating that claim. Um, okay, then. Um, the other thing I was considering is if we go to our, so we need, we have a plus one missionary strength advisor. So now we're going to need this guy, this national unrest, until our overextension goes away. Otherwise, we're going to be in serious trouble with um, possibly getting internal conflicts again because our national unrest is um, so high what with the war exhaustion and the overextension. But after the overextension goes away, I should be able to safely replace him with the missionary guy. So we'll be looking to do that as well. We're also going to keep a very close eye on these <coughs> in order to hopefully, um, we might we wind up spending a lot of military power doing harsh treatment in the next few years. But we have the military power to burn, and we're not behind on military tech, so I'm okay doing that. Um, all right, just taking a quick perusal here. We could, yeah, we could buy military technology and diplo technology, um, but I'm going to save the points for now in case I need them. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, see, so look at that provincial unrest. It's pretty nasty. Um, I did get suggested, I get a suggestion from Chief Raguza on the Paradox forums that I could sell Albania to Serbia. Um, I can't do it now, of course, because I'm at war. But after the war's over, I'll consider it. Although, I'm not going to take back coring it for right now. Um, but we'll see how that goes. See how long this other war lasts. Um, so this army, you're going to need, need to meet my fleet there. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um... Well, I still have a truce with Venice for another six months. Hopefully that's long enough for my relation to get into the positives with them. Um, Austria, I know it's tempting to think they have a disputed succession, but what happened is they actually have a 15-year-old ruler, so <laughs> he's not dying anytime soon, unless he gets killed off in battle. Um, and, yeah, I have too many diplomatic relations, which I know. I I'm I can suffer that because I have a really strong diplomatic leader. All right, so I think that's all we needed to do right away. So let's go ahead and unpause, and 
we can go ahead and get this started. Um, we, a bunch of events right away, of course, uh, all those people that we pieced out with. Okay, so let's take a quick look at those. Um, we've got Crimea. I think I supplant, I probably um, surpassed Crimea, but I can't change my, my rivals won't change until after this war ends. Serbia no longer exists. Poland has announced Austria as a new rival. That's unfortunate since those are my two allies, but Austria has already rivaled Poland. Um, okay, and these two finished, so let's send you back to protecting trade. And, alright, continue. All right, so I'm just my curiosity is getting the better of me. I want to know um, how these how this rebellion goes. Okay, yep, yeah, Crimea is no longer a valid rival for Byzantium. So we got yep, yeah, we got a little bit of power projection out of that. Um, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me. All right, I will keep an eye on that. Um, okay, we're mainly moving our troops over here so we can chase away this Tuscan army that's besieging Rome. Don't want to let them uh, actually take Rome. That would be bad. Put our main fleet back together. And. Oh, I'm not quite there yet. Okay. France now has a disputed succession. Interesting. Did they just get a new leader? Uh, no. They didn't get a new leader. I'm not sure what happened. Their heir must have died. Maybe they had him leading an army or got an event or something. Okay. Let's ship you guys over to here. Alright, we're making money again. That's a good sign. Um... We're definitely going to need some more money to hire some more mercenaries in all likelihood, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so it's good that we're making money again. Okay. Um... Go ahead and wait until I move my whole army over before I... Uh... before I go up there and fight those guys. The siege has made basically no progress anyway. Although it looks like they're sending in a few more troops, which is annoying. But yeah, status quo, status quo. Okay. I don't think Venice can declare war on me while I'm at a, in a war with them. So... Pisa is embargoing me. Really? That kind of surprises me. Okay. Finish preparing my troops. Let's go get rid of these Tuscans. What's their leader? They have a five fire, zero shock, three maneuver leader. Interesting. Um. Brandenburg accepted peace with Thuringia. Yeah, all these people with their um, admin tech can pass active uniformity. I'd really like to level up my admin tech. Get a second idea group. Start getting those missionaries. Okay. Now, just take, let's just take a quick look here. How big is France's navy? Am I going to be at risk Oops, military if I send my navy up there to blockade some of southern France? 
France has eight light ships, eight heavy ships, 16 light ships, and zero galleys. That's... And I have 22 galleys. Um, so yeah, so their navy is more powerful than my navy. Um, the question is, are they going to send an army down here to fight me if I move up and start besieging Tuscany? And the answer is, maybe? Um, they do have a lot of issues at home they have to deal with. Hmm. We'll see. How's this? This is at 80% now. Now, Albanian nationalists, they just have one province. If I can get back there, I might just go ahead and let them revolt. And, um... Because hopefully they won't have too big of a too big of a revolt. So maybe what I'll do is I'll finish off these uh, Tuscans. Okay. Um, my royal marriage with Serbia ended. Oh, that's right. I called back my diplomat to fabricate that claim, and then I forgot to do it. Well. Let's go ahead and re. Oh, uh, that's going to cost me two legitimacy. Now, all right, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so we drove off Tuscany. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can finish off their army. Because our army is going to be occupied for a while. Still at 80%. Okay. Here, okay, Latina. Is this more? There's more Tuscan troops. Okay. So them. Uh, 27th. 29th. Can I move into Pisa? I can. First of May, second of May. All right, should finish you guys off. And there's Naples. Return home. Um, okay, Naples. Internal conflicts is back. What happened? Oh, did I get more war exhaustion? I probably got more war exhaustion. Um, or did my oh my advisor died. Oh, well, that's terrible. Well, I might as well hire this guy. <coughs> but, um, let's see. So I can buy down two points of war exhaustion and increase my stability. I really don't want to increase my stability, though. Um... Well, I'm going to buy down. That's also going to dramatically increase the chances of a rebel uprising. I'm going to go ahead and spend some diplomatic power, buy down my last two points of war exhaustion, so that will help. And then, all right, if I start getting close to... Uh, internal conflicts, I will increase my stability. But I don't want to spend all of that extra admin power right now to do it. Oh, and I was going to tell Naples um, go ahead and be aggressive. Because I'm not going to fight in this war, but that doesn't mean you guys can't. Awesome. Thank you, Naples. Now, are we at 90% yet? No. Okay. I'm going to ferry these guys back. And... 
Oops. You know what? Actually, I'm going to do this march you here. So I can just jump across the straight like that. And land you in Albania. 90%? 90%. Okay. Can I get my... I should be able to get my troops in there before the month ticks over again. Okay, there's the first bunch. Losing money again. So uh, the Ottomans haven't haven't started going after at least they haven't gone after these rebels yet. I don't think that rebellion will ultimately succeed, but I do think it will keep the keep them occupied for a while. <coughs> okay. There's the Albanian nationalists. Only 10,000 of them. Alright, and it's in the mountains, and I'm defending, so I should win that. Um, that reminds me, I've got to start fabricating that claim. Spy offense or spy. Just give me the prestige, even though I don't really need it. Um, let's. Actions fabricate claim. I still have that mission, right? Uh, yeah, I do. All right. Okay. <coughs> okay. Well, with that. Revolt crush that gives me ten years of recent uprising. So that significantly reduces my desire to sell that province. <laughs> um, okay. All right. I'm going to move my troops somewhere where they're going to do a little bit more good like Sophia. Um, I'm kind of surprised I don't see Bulgarian nationalists in that list. They're here. Yeah. Um, that's a much more dangerous potential rebellion. I'll go ahead and move my troops over to Sophia. Um, and then, uh, I don't want to, thinking about trying to figure out how to mothball a fleet, I've never done that before, but I know you can do that in Art of War, and I'm, you know, I'm probably not going to use my galleys for a while, but, um, I don't want to do it while I'm still at war, you never know. How's France doing in this war? Um, they're winning a bunch of battles. But they haven't actually occupied anything yet. Um, okay. All right, Damascus is occupied by Syrian nationalists. Yeah. If Syria actually becomes independent here, that would be awesome. That would really slow down the Ottomans taking over the Mamluk land. It would make them weaker, and it would make it much easier for them to, for me to overrun them in future wars. Um, four percent. I need some of this overextension to tick down, but I got a couple more years before that happens. Or I mean my legitimacy to go up. Um, or <clears throat> I need a 
finish these. Now that I have a missionary, at least this will go faster. Um, yeah, those will be that'll be finished in two years. That'll be finished in two years. Okay, there's the Ottoman troops. They're preventing. Oh, uh, recent uprising expired in Rome. Let's start getting revolt risk there again. How much? 14.5%. Well, it was. That's a lot lower than it was um, earlier, but I can't afford to let that revolt fire either because that was like a 30,000 strong army, and my army is not up to fighting them anymore. <laughs> um. But that base revolt unrest has gone away, so that's good. So all that's so we've got nationalism, intolerance, and overextension left. Uh, and nationalism lasts for another twenty years or so. Um, and of course, I can't convert them. But who knows? Maybe I'll get an event that will convert them. That would be nice. I'm going to be dealing with Roman rebels for a long time. Um, unless I get an event that converts Rome. But I can live with that. Okay. We have an army here. Reduces the unrest by about five. Which is good. We're still only at 50%. Oh, I'm at maximum military power. Um, all right, maybe I'll buy some tech. How much is it going to cost me? 904. That would leave me with about 300 left. 200. Yeah, about 300 left. Um, I'm three years ahead of time. Okay, I'm going to wait one more month until it ticks over and then go ahead and buy the military tech. I'm losing some. I'm wasting some here. Actually, you know, I'm going to be dealing with Bulgarian nationalists for a long time here. How much is it to reduce the harsh treatment then? 58. All right, I'm going to spend the 58 and then buy the tech when the year ticks over. Because I'm making, how much? I'm making seven per month. I'm still going to buy the tech when the year ticks over. Um, two years ahead of time. 844. Yeah, so that saved me about, uh, that saved me about 60 military power. Hmm. I'm making 12 times 7. All right. I'm going to buy it. Okay. Uh, that gives me better cavalry and better artillery. And do I want shock damage or on defense or morale on defense? Uh, I think I want morale on defense. <coughs> Go Naples! I wonder where Venice's army is. Am I positive relations with them yet? Yeah, I am. That's good. That should hopefully discourage them from declaring independence. My manpower is slowly recovering. Um, lose one base tax here. That's actually going to speed up my conversion of that province. So, sure. It also moves tax base from a non-accepted culture to an accepted culture. So that's just all good. Um, of course, they all right. Not all good. The autonomy increase is bad, but um, I think it's worth it actually. Uh, all right. My general died. 
Um, oh, that was not the general I'm using. Okay, that was the other general. That's fine then. Um, I think. Yeah, my other general's still here. Okay, well, maybe I will stick this war out to its finish then. Liege is actually winning. France has started losing battles. <clears throat> it would be fun to try and vassalize Tuscany. But I don't I want to keep my troops over in my main area just in case something happens. I want to keep enough 12%. 13%. Okay, I think I'm going to finish coring these provinces and reduce my unrest before that happens. I hope. See, I'm not sure. Does it take... Is this the percent chance of it actually occurring each month? Or is this... Does it have to get to 100 before it fires? Now what do I have to do to get out of danger? Alright, finish that. France white pieced out with Hungary. Okay, so I could probably white piece out with them if I wanted to. Um, I hope it's not the percent chance each month that'll fire. I hope it has to get to 100 before it happens, but I have no way of knowing really. Um, my legitimacy and my religious unity, I think, are what's driving that down. Um, what was I going to do? I forget. <laughs> uh, curtail mercenaries expired. Okay. How's the Ottomans? Oh, interesting. Oh, the Ottomans. All right, the Ottomans killed the rebels. Not surprised. Since my navy's here at the moment, I'll go ahead and recombine those. So the Syrians are not going to become independent. But they definitely did keep the Ottomans busy. Okay, Tuscany accepted peace with Liege. All right, well, that at least makes Rome safe. Um, it's looking like France is going to lose this war again. It'll be interesting to see what Liege takes from them. Love of the devoted, tolerance of the two plus three. Well, that helps in these two provinces because they're orthodox and they all, that, that they still have unrest. Um, oh yeah, I finished fabricating that claim. Um, I really want to fabricate a claim on Crimea. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I know, so I have it in my pocket for later. Because Crimea, obviously a very important strategic province. And it's not their capital anymore. They moved their capital over here. Um... I don't want any of those missions. So, oh yeah, what do my manpower have to get to be out of danger? I need to be above 25%. So 25% of 30,000 is 7,000, seven and a half. I'm getting there. Okay, I need this not to fire for about six months. All right, for about a year. I need it not to fire for about a year. And all of these cores will be done. And I'll be out of danger of it. So that's going to take it up to 
religious civil disorder in Sweden. I haven't looked at the religion map for a while. I should do that. That's going to take it up to about 25%. Hmm. Um, so we've got a Protestant. we got a center of Reformation. We've got a bunch of centers of Reformation in Sweden. And still just the one in Paris but it's converted all of the surrounding provinces um, and one in Holstein there isn't one here anymore but there's a bunch of oh Bohemia converted to Protestant interesting Interesting. All right, and of course you can see my Sunni provinces. Moscovy is looking pretty unhappy. I don't think they've been, they haven't lost any more territory since that last war with Novgorod, but still looking pretty unhappy. All right. So... Do I want to just go ahead and peace out with France now? I think I will. Oh, I have no diplomats to send. All right, come back. Maybe I can actually get something out of this war if I peace out with them now. Just curious, what is my war enthusiasm for this war? Um, oh, it's actually high. Okay. Oh, I have I have no personal war score with them, but they will white peace out with me, and I think I'm going to do that. It's going to give me a negative penalty with Liege, but not with Austria, since Liege is the war leader. Yeah. Let's just get out of this war. That will allow me to start get more um, uh, autonomy reduction in my provinces and start and prevent me from getting any more war exhaustion. And oh, that did give me a separate peace penalty with Austria. That's unfortunate. I didn't think it would, but it did. Rats. Oh well, I'll have to remember that in the future. Um, all right, I have to pick another rival because I surpassed Crimea. Uh, let's see, Castile rivaled me. But I'm not actually going to go after them anytime soon. Aragon would have been an interesting choice, but I can't rival them either. Um, I could rival Kara. That's not a terrible idea. Or France. Eh. Probably not going to go after them either. Milan. That's an interesting idea. Not quite in the position to rival them yet, I don't think. Um... Let's see. I could... Let's see. Who are my allies' rivals? France and Poland. Uh, Austria, Muscovy, and Hungary. Um, Poland, Bohemia, and Serbia. Serbia and Hungary are rivals now? Hungary, Milan, and the Papal State. They are. That's kind of annoying. Um, I don't really foresee attacking any of these countries anytime soon. But of the ones that are up here, probably the most ones that I'm most likely to go after are Milan and Kara. And I'm probably more likely to go after Milan before Kara. 
So I'm gonna rival Milan. Are they rivaled with me? They are. Okay, I'm gonna rival Milan. Wait, who are their their enemies? Are the Ottomans? Oh no, that's my enemies. <laughs> Their enemies are Switzerland, Savoy, and Serbia. Well, that can't be a rival of rival with Serbia, anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll rival Milan. <coughs> I just don't see myself going after Kara until after I'm finished with the Ottomans, and that's not going to be for a long time. Well, Crimea is actually winning this war. It must be because of their allies. The Ottomans at war? No. Are they actually still allied with? They are still allied with the Ottomans. They just didn't call them into that war. Yep, gotta keep an eye on those Bulgarian nationalists. Um. Three, two, yeah, boy. I hope that eternal conflict doesn't fire. And the peasants' war. Oh, I have to be. You can't get a peasants' war while you're at war. I guess that makes sense. And you can't get a peasants' war unless you're overextended. So, just have to hang on till October. I'm actually pretty happy with my army composition now considering I'm not really going to buy any more um, not going to buy any more mercenaries anytime soon Hungary is dealing with Croatian nationalists and Peasant nationalists. They must have like a yeah. They have a peasants' war going on. That's why they're in trouble. Yep, Austria got an error. No surprise there. Every month without a disaster firing is good news. Okay. Finish converting that province. That will help. Um, oh, Bulgarian nationalists are up to 90%. All right. I'm in a harsh treatment with them. Drop them back down to 60. Not particularly keen on getting rebels in all five of these provinces. Um, secure Senate in Italy is too far away. What do I have to have to protect against my lawn? Oh, I can do that. What's the... It's five army tradition. That's my army tradition. It's actually pretty good. Um, sure. So I just need two more regiments to do that. Making... Alright, I'm going to go ahead and hire a couple of infantry mercenaries just to complete that mission I think it's worth it 
If I was in a stronger position, I would go help Hungary with those with their rebels, but I'm not, so I won't. Hungary looks like they might actually get broken by this um, by this peasants war. All right, so that's officially. Did that not? Oh, I still have to, have to wait for these mercenaries to finish. That. That's my timer. I'm just gonna hang on until October before I end this episode and see if we don't we don't get a disaster here. All right, and we finish protect against Milan. Convert the people of Asia Minor. Not one province in Asia Minor is not owned by Byzantium. Is Orthodox. So if I does that so they're so if all the provinces of Asia Minor are either not owned by me or are Orthodox, so I just have to convert one province to fulfill that mission, and I get ten prestige and ten patriarch authority. That seems pretty good. Um, sure, I'll take that mission. And I'll convert this, and if that doesn't complete the quest, I'll discard the mission. <laughs> Alright, August. That's down to zero unrest. That tolerance, especially with that um, country modifier of minus three, makes a huge difference. And am I up enough? I have enough manpower. No, nope, not enough manpower to stop the peasants' war yet. Now I need four more months. All right, finish that conversion. That's good. Almost done with those cores. I'll still be slightly overextended with Albania, but that's okay. And I can start converting them. Alright, no internal conflicts. Up to 29%, but it should go away now. Um. Yeah, it's gone away. So I just have to worry about the Peasants' War. Oh, and Bulgarian Nationalists, again. I'm going to harsh treatment them again. Eventually I'm going to have to fight them. But not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, so I definitely want to send a missionary here. Take 45 months. What is that? That's four years. Okay. And those two are already converted, of course. Um, All right, so I'll go ahead and send a missionary here. And that's going to take three years. And when Albania finishes, I'll send a missionary there too. OK. All right, and actually, that's um, where I'm going to end this episode. So. We had a really close shave there with uh, internal conflicts, um, but we got a little bit lucky and managed to avoid it. Um, and our, I believe our manpower has reached the point where we're also out of either, or I think we're out of danger for Peasants' War or almost out of danger for Peasants' War. 
one or the other. So now we just have to worry about conventional rebellions, um, which of course we are definitely at risk for. All right, so um, I'm going to end the episode here once again. Thank you for all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel. And have a terrific day.